My precious. Let's talk about Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle Earth, designed by Antoine Bauza and Bruno Cathala and published by Repos Productions and Asmodee Company. This is a re-implementation of Seven Wonders Duels, which I've actually not played, so this is my first foray into it. So I actually found this to be quite interesting because I've never experienced these mechanics before. This is a two-player only game and it's the perfect way to play with my boyfriend who's not that big of a gamer. And he has beat me every time. The game is pretty simple. On your turn, you can take a card for its value, pay the value in your skills or with money, or you can discard that card and get the money for it depending on the round, or you can buy a fortress to get some presents on the board. The cards themselves are just like what you'd find in Seven Wonders. So there are money cards, there are skill cards or resource cards. There are cards that are going to put people on the map for you. These are what you would consider your war cards. And there's science cards that are now actually the favor of each of the different races in Middle Earth. The game can end in any of four ways. Frodo and Sam can reach Mount Doom and throw the ring into the fire and they win. The Nazgul's can get caught up to Frodo and then Sauron wins. And there can be a global conquest. If you have managed to get a person on every part of the board in Middle Earth, then you also win, which could be Sauron or the Fellowship. Then there are additional ways you can win, such as getting the favor of all of the different races. I've played this wrong a couple of times, and so it turns out I may have actually won in the past because you only need to get the six different green cards. You don't actually have to get the six different tokens, which requires you to get two of those green cards, which is actually very, very difficult to achieve in the game. I have ended the game several times though with the fourth condition of we ran out of cards and all we have to do is evaluate the area control at the end of the game. I found this to be very lackluster and so that's what's really not giving this like a good perfect score for me because too many times I have ended the game by having to calculate who has the most presence on the board and that's not fun. I want the game to be thematically fun. I want to win by getting the ring to the end. I want to win by getting the influence of everybody or getting that presence during the game. Like I felt like I'm taking over everything instead of just reaching the end and figuring out who won. And then there's been times where we actually still tied and there's no real tiebreaker. You just share the victory. However, this is illustrated by Vincent Detroit, one of my favorite artists. I love looking at all of the art in this game. It is so beautiful. Another thing I really like is that on the side of the box is the layout of all of the cards that you need to play because the layout of the cards changes each round. So I thought that was really cool and because the box is gonna be on my table anyways and it's really nice and small. The insert is also made of cardboard, but it's like a vacuum formed cardboard, which is really cool and fits everything in there fits vertically and horizontally without any movement. And the track for the ring, it has this acrylic piece where the Nazgul sit on top of it. And then if you're the fellowship, you move the entire acrylic piece. And then the Nazgul moves as well at the same time. And then if you're a Nazgul, you get to move up. And each one of those has bonuses. I thought that was a really cool mechanic. I'm not too sure what that does in Seven Wonders Duel, but for Lord of the Rings Duel Middle Earth, this was really, really cool. Make sure you give this a check out and check me out as usual. We'll see you next time.